talked about some before, but not as well into depth. Um, remember I talked about using props and aids and other things that would be great to use in a session. Let's talk about just the ambience of your session. And sometimes I think ambience sets the session tone much more than the aids and the little gaming things. What you're trying to do in your session when your players come is create the environment that you want them to feel a part of when they are adventuring that day in whatever campaign you set up. One example of that, use props. And I think that's a, the first thing of all. And, and what do I mean by props? There was a, uh, a GM I saw on Roll20 for Pathfinder and he was in the Skulls and Shackles campaign. He had a pirate hat with the dreadlocks attached to it. And so he was setting the tone. Yes, people would look at that and go, okay, it's a little dorky, but it's setting the mood. You're a pirate, wear a pirate hat. Maybe it's, it's wearing pirate clothing if you're a Renfair person, or wearing cosplay outfits when you game. Yes, I am promoting this as a GM. The ambience of a setting puts you into your character's shoes. It really sets you to think like they do and have your players think like they should for their characters. So don't knock if somebody wants to dress up or if they want to have a special charm or maybe some little trinket with them that makes them think about the character they are on Critical Role. Great example, Matt Mercer, Matthew Mercer's folks basically bring their um, different things that remind them. So Orion Akaba may have something to remind him of his Dragonborn. Uh, let's just say that, um, <laughs> that we have Grog, the Barbarian, with William. Um, he has a big grog mug that he uses that he'll hold up like this or he'll have a little sometimes he has the little battle axe with him or the great axe that uh, grog is using so he's got a prop for that and some of it was sent by critical role people to them as gifts but it's those little trinkets and mementos that really set the tone for your session my guys love the dice towers and so i've got a second dice tower thanks to uh, Basement Heroes, and I want to give a big shout out to those guys, to him and to his group that he brings on there. Great bunch of people, um, a great gentleman who runs things there. Uh, thank you so much for the Dice Tower. It was great winning it, and uh, for me, having two Dice Towers. So I've got one Dice Tower for the players, plus the other player's Dice Tower, plus my Dice Tower. Theirs is gray, mine is black to represent the GM. Whatever it is, these little aids, these little props, um, maybe it's you put up some scenery. So, for instance, another thing that I've seen in Critical Role, the GM has a GM's chair. And it looks like this old world wooden chair that is just cool. And uh, his screen can be, I've seen some people do the DM screens that look like a castle wall. And they'll have the, the, uh, the towers and it'll have the crenellations and everything else all around it. And it sets a mood. It sets a tone. Really don't be afraid as a GM to be a little hokey even at times and use props to set an environment. You're trying to create for these players the feeling of being there so that it enhances their role play and makes it even more special for them. So number one, props. Number two, music. Now you got to gauge this because again, we got a player that's remote that dials in over Skype. So it makes it kind of difficult. But when everyone was together, I started to get into playing music. So I got programs like Sirenscape. I've got uh, some playlists that I put together from YouTube because we have Wi-Fi here and I'll pull up my computer. And I run using Hero Labs on there. So in the background, I'll set the music. And I've got some playlists both on my iPad that has things from, say, Marco Polo and some of the other great ones like um, Braveheart and, uh, and uh, 
oh, Gladiator and some others for general combat. So if I'm in a general setting. But I'm a believer that even set it for the environment they're in. So if they're in a winter campaign, go out to YouTube and look at winter fantasy music. If they are in a desert, look up um, Arabian Nights or other type of music there. So I'm not talking about the Disney one. I'm talking about the Arabian Bazaar music where it plays the flutes and the, the sitars and some of the other instruments that give you that feel. If it's more in a wooded area, get some Celtic soundtracks for the Celtic areas. If it's in, if, if you're in Pathfinder and say you're somewhere like unique like Varishia, get some gypsy music that you can play that just, it, it sets that whole vibe to what you're doing. And you can even have combat tracks that are ready for when you get into combat with different creatures and monsters. There are so many different people. Um, there's, a, there's a gentleman I subscribe to, and, and forgive me, you, you'll shoot me, I can't remember your name, that does the sound stuff that's going to be compatible for Sirenscape. And Sirenscape, might, the guys might put a, a comment up there who it is. But... You can add that type of music. You can subscribe to people who make the music. But use music. I, I tell you, in life, music evokes inside me as a human being different moods and feelings. So when you're doing this and you're setting it all out and you play the music, you're going to start feeling the actual mood that goes with it. When the music gets a little more intense and tense, it's like in a, being in a movie. Think about it. When the movie gets tense, you get tense with the music. When the, there are scary moments that you sit on the edge of your seat, scary music will put you on that edge of that seat to think about, okay, what's coming? What, what am I going to expect? Music evokes in people response. So don't discredit music. Don't make it really way high up to where you can't hear your players, but set it at an in-between point to where you can hear it. It's like the undertone that's playing behind you and leading the party into this, this mood you want them to be in. Uh, also use scenery. Now, there's things like Dwarven Forge that does villages. So big shout out to Dwarven Forge. Great work. And again, it costs a little bit of money, but uh, it's well worth it. There's another group that you have to look up. Um, you have to look at uh, Egyptian ruins. And I forgive me, sir, for not remembering your deal because you make some beautiful plaster ruins for Egypt and, and for the pyramid type of things. Uh, we got some of that for the Oasis. Oh my gosh, it's just beautiful stuff. And so my fiance is working on that for when I get into the Mummy's Mask campaigns in Pathfinder. Or you can run a mummy, modern mummy campaign, say, in one of your modern type of things like Savage Worlds or Cypher System. And those kind of props will really just set the feeling for the players when they look down of where are they and, and what, what's unfolding. So use scenery. You can go to places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. You can go online and look for scenery for miniatures and miniature battles. And what you want to do is you want to create that feeling of being there. Uh, you can even use a full scenery like on a ping pong table if you want them to sit around a ping pong table with the scenery. And you just use a ruler to show where distances are uh, for hexes and grids and everything else. You can set distances to be five foot with your ruler. We used to do that with miniature battles when I used to do those when I was younger. So you really set a scenery for them so that when they look down they're thinking that scenery i love doing it now for me unfortunately i don't have enough of it yet so i still have to draw a lot so get good at drawing different things on your hex grid paper that's erasable really evoke what's going on because you want the players to feel it um one thing that was given yesterday by evil squeegee when i was watching his though is a gm don't clutter an area so much in the scenery that they miss out on the key things you want them to see. So really do colors, little schemes around it, drawings, use different colors to draw their attention to the items you want them to see. 
Uh, mine's a winter campaign, so I use blue for the snow things. I use green for the living things. And then I use red for those things that maybe are a little unique and out of place. If you utilize that, you're going to evoke pictures in people's minds. The brain processes things. And one of the things that Squeegee was talking about is it processes it not all at once, but they're looking at sections and processing and processing. So really, when you set up your sections of what you want them to see, process things, set things to really process in their mind and solidify. Um, it's important. And sometimes we just do helter-skelter willy-nilly. Don't do that to yourself as a GM. Really utilize it. Get miniatures, get punch-outs, whatever. I mean, even... Even if you don't use everything that is in there, so say your your Savage Worlds, you can use some of the Pathfinder punch-outs for different creatures and things that they come upon. Um, you can get things from, uh, uh, oh, jeez. There, there's so many different miniature companies. Reaper is one of the biggest. Uh, Whiz Kids. You can really look at these companies and try to find the figurines and miniatures you want. Now, with Reaper, unfortunately, you have to paint them or you can commission somebody to paint them. I'm fortunate to have the Reaper Miniature Factory literally 25 minutes or more less from me uh, down here in Texas. So, you know, I can go up there and there's people painting all the time. So I could pay them and commission them to, to do some miniatures for me. And... There's different things you can do, depending on your budget and what you want to do with it. But really set the scene with the scenery that you're using. And descriptive words. Really think out how you're describing things to your characters. Like the other day, you'll see in my one video, I said about the, the sergeant who they, they bluffed the heck out of, which I will never forget that for the next year. Now, year after, I might. But... For me, just what I described to him is this: I let them finish what they were saying they were doing and, and just let them fully get to act out what they want to act out. And then I described to them the result. And what I said to him is the sergeant went through a litany of emotions. And I try to make my face go into those features. He was angry. And then he was kind of bewildered. And then he was fearful because then he's going, what have I gotten myself into? And, and what I told him is you can just see this go across his face. So they're visualizing this guy going through these emotions. He's this burly, orphan warrior who's ready to stamp them out of existence. And now he's, he, he's totally fooled. He's bewildered. He's, he's fearful. He's tentative. He doesn't know whether he's doing the right thing anymore. And, and what happens if he's doing the wrong thing? And what happens if he gets punished? Uh, so the motions on your face, you as the GM create the picture through your words and how you describe it to them. Really use, utilize great words to describe, especially those epic situations where they roll that natural 20. When they're describing, you describe as well. So I said, okay, so you want to cleave them that way. So guys, you're, do, you know, I, like with Scott's asthma, our war priest, so basically, you come down on the creature. He raises his arm to block you. The Yeti does. You cleave through his hand into the front of his head and into his eye socket. And I said, and the blood just geysers up. And so what does that do? That takes that normal, you hit it and he killed it, and just sets that epic moment of just everyone wants to cheer afterwards. That's what you are creating through all this scenery, through the props, through the music, through the layout on the board, and through your words. You are painting a picture for your players, and you are the artist. And take it that way. As a GM, you are an artist. You are creating. Some of the best GMs out there, Critical Role, um, Rise Up Group. Um, God, what are some of the other ones that are out there? Carpe GM, Carpe DM. So both sides, GM and DM, two different people. Um, the, the, oh, there's so many others. There's so many DMs and GMs. I love you guys on Twitter. 
but some of the memorable ones that you have, they're going to stick with you. AP Real, AP Real and his props. Love AP because of his props. He's just proptastic is the best word I can use for it. So realize that you are setting yourself apart by your craftsmanship. So take ownership of it. Love it. Enjoy it. Um, do the voices. Do the features. Give the action of what's going on. As you see, I'm very animated. That's the way I am in my sessions. You want to be animated because then your players are sitting there on the edge of their seats watching you. And see, that's what sets you apart from the person who just goes, well, you encounter this, and you go into this situation in the woods, and then you see three monsters standing there. They're goblins. No. You're entering this primal woods, and as you move along, it just gets more and more primal, and the noises you hear around you, and then there's silence. And out of the wood, chittering and laughing and giggling maniacally, giggling maniacally are these three green heads that come out. And yes, they're goblins. One carries a torch. One carries a firebomb lit as he giggles in glee. And the third, his horse chopper. And they stare at you with looks and leers that of, of hunger that they want to just tear you from limb to limb. See the difference? That's what you set for your players. You have to think what would be the just over-the-top description. But it's okay to be over-the-top. You're in a role-playing game. You're in a, you know, if you're in a, a sci-fi game, you enter the airlock of the space station. And your footsteps echo off the corridor. It's barely lit with flickering neon lights. And into the distance, you see a form sloughing your way. It looks somewhat alive, but maybe not. And you hear it sloughing towards you. And as it hits the neon light, you see the pulsing evilness of the growth on what once was a human. And it shambles towards you with a look of hatred. See how you set the tone? That's how you set the tone. That's what gets the build up. That's what leads people to act and make the characters make the attempt. Describe it and use very descriptive words. And it's okay if you're not used to it. Get used to it. The more you practice it, the more you do it, the more your players will appreciate it. I didn't do this when I started out. I wasn't this descriptive. But in my mind, I see pictures of how it should go. That's how you create with a GM. Put in your mind pictures of what you want to communicate to your players and then take the time to use your vocabulary to do it and build it into a story that no one will forget and laugh with your players and cry with your players and get angry with your players. This is what pulls things together. The guys love when I laugh with them when things just fall apart. Even from my NPCs, the laughter and just playing it up, that's what matters. So have a great morning, 